Here's an interesting story that may come as a surprise to you. Twitter is shadow banning prominent Republicans like RNC chair and Trump Jr.'s spokesman. Um, so, this is Vice News reporting this. Vice News is not a right-wing outlet. So it was the fact that this was on Vice News that made me go, oh, okay, so this isn't just like World Net Daily or Daily Caller complaining about it. And by the way, if it was on one of those sites and one of those sites alone, I wouldn't trust it because those sites are notoriously wrong about so much shit they talk about. Oftentimes, I think they just make shit up. Um, but when it's Vice News and it's, you know, this is not a site that's right wing and they're talking about this, I went, oh, okay, so this appears to be real. Now, right before I came on here this morning... I saw Donald Trump did a classic Donald Trump tweet storm, and he said, uh, Shadow banning of conservatives, sad. We'll address this. And he's going to fucking launch an investigation. Okay, that goes way too far because Twitter is a private company, and they get to do whatever the fuck they want. I mean, now, you can be of the belief that maybe they should be regulated like a public utility. And in fact, I would agree with you if that's your position. I now think that's the reasonable thing to do, is that they could they could be a private company and they can have a profit motive, but they should be regulated like a private utility and they should, you know, have to abide by free speech guidelines. Um, so you can want it to be a public utility, but it is not a public utility. So for Trump to say we're going to launch an investigation, it doesn't, even if they are shadow banning, that doesn't violate any law. So I don't know what an investigation would do. But anyway, um... Let me give you what they say here. They say, Twitter is limiting the visibility of prominent Republicans in search results, a technique known as shadow banning. And what it says is a side effect of its attempts to improve the quality of discourse on the platform. The Republican Party chair, Ronna McDaniel, se uh, several conservative Republican congressmen, and Donald Trump Jr.'s spokesman no longer appear in the auto-populated drop-down search box on Twitter, uh, Vice News has learned. It's a shift that diminishes their reach on the platform and is the same one being deployed against prominent racists to limit their visibility. The profiles continue to appear when conducting a full search, but not in the more convenient and visible drop-down bar. The accounts appear to also populate um, if you already follow the person. Democrats are not being shadow banned in the same way, according to a Vice News review. McDaniel's counterpart, Democratic... Uh, party chair Tom Perez and liberal members of Congress, including representatives Maxine Waters, Joe Kennedy III, Keith Ellison, and Mark uh, Pocan, all continue to appear in drop-down search results. Not a single member of the 78-person Progressive Caucus faces the same situation in Twitter search. Now, they go on to say it's not it's not really all-encompassing because, you know, you would expect, like, Alex Jones to be, tw to be shadow banned. He's not. Uh, and there are many other, like Steve King, the congressman who's cuddled up to white nationalists. Um, you would expect maybe he would be shadow banned. He's not. So it's not all-encompassing, uh, and it appears to be rather sporadic, and there's no real logical formula to it. But at the same time, it is true, as they laid out here, that it's happening more to right-wing figures at the moment than left-wing figures. So here's my um, take on this. No, don't do it. Stop. Stop. <laughs> it, this doesn't... First of all, you feed the victim complex... Number one. Number two, on principle, you're actually wrong to do it. I don't... Listen. I'm not scared of the shit that the right has to say. In fact, it's the opposite. I think the more people see their bullshit, the more likely they are to turn away from them and to come to us. <laughs> I mean, you give them enough rope, they're gonna hang themselves. So, you're feeding the victim uh, culture they now have. This is actually an instance of some on that side, being a victim, and I disagree on principle with it. And on top of all that, I simply don't trust Silicon Valley oligarchs to filter and tell me what I should and shouldn't see. I don't trust their judgment, and neither should you. And even if you, th even if you like the story to this point, and you're like, yeah, fuck those conservatives, who cares? It might not be used right now on the left. You don't think it's gonna at some point be used on the left you bet your ass it'll be used on the left. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. This idea that there's like, oh, there's nothing offensive that comes from the left. Or there's nothing objectionable that comes from the left. Of course there is. Of course there is. Well, if it's a... What if it's legit communists? What if it's, you know, Antifa, actual Antifa, not like a parody account, and they're advocating for violence or whatever, or they're on the brink of advocating for violence? 
and it's a it's a toss up. You think there won't be consequences? There's going to be consequences. You know, you can if you look at some of the tweets from somebody like me, like I'm massively against religion. I'm sure I've said some insanely offensive shit about, you know, the intelligence of religious people maybe being far too broad and condemning all of the, you know what I mean? Like there's always something you can go to and say, that's um, offensive. Let's shadow ban him. So, and then also listen, I actually experienced this um, recently, not me, but I saw somebody liked a tweet of mine and it's somebody who I wouldn't expect to like a tweet of mine. It's, it was a right wing figure. And I was like, that's weird. Let me see if this is indeed true. So I went to go type in the thing at the search box, type in their name to go check to go to their likes and see if they did indeed do that. I thought it was like a mistake or something. And when I type, it didn't pop up. When I started typing the name into the search box, it didn't pop up. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, did they, is, is this person's account suspended? I don't know, maybe it is. And then um, what I ended up doing is going to my, to my likes, not my likes, my mentions, and scrolling down, clicking on the person's name, and then it took me to that person's page. I was like, okay, that was weird. So they're not, um, they're not off the platform. They weren't like suspended. But when I searched for them, they didn't come up. I thought that, that was really weird. Now I know exactly what it is. It was a shadow ban. So I don't agree with that. And that it actually is kind of annoying to me that like when I typed that person's name and it didn't come up and I couldn't look for it. It's like, no, I'm making the decision to see what this person is doing. And Twitter's telling me, no, 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 it's cool. You don't have to see because we don't like that person. Fuck you. I don't like that person either, but that doesn't mean I can't look at their shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? So, uh, not a good idea. Um, and, but I think we're getting to an unfortunate position where so many people are begging for social media censorship. That they want Facebook to do it, they want YouTube to do it, they want Twitter to do it. And my thing is always, be careful what you wish for, man. Because you're never gonna... Once you allow the censorship, you're never gonna always agree with who they decide to censor. So it's much easier to just draw a clean line and say, don't censor anybody. You know, if they obviously violate the terms of service in an egregious way, then yes, you could do it. But most of the time, that's not why people get shadow banned or why they get censored. And it's frustrating. We already, and I, listen, I think a lot of what happened with Adpocalypse on YouTube has led me to realize that, you know, a lot of these things should be treated as public utilities. Because if we really go to Facebook and YouTube and Twitter, and that's like the public square now, because we're all, we all do everything on the internet. Well, then why shouldn't it be treated like it is the public square? <laughs> so maybe treating it as a public utility, social media, is a good idea. Because um, I don't agree with what's happening, and I think it's only going to get worse.